Hey, welcome back to the show. We'll use the quad cortex today and we'll just see how it goes capturing the tone of the Marshall DSL. I've dialed it in and used all the pedals just to try and recreate like a Gary Holt tempo of the damn tone. It's probably one of my favorite, most aggressive sort of Marshall bass tones that you can get. And we'll just see how accurate the capture is and A and B it back and forth. There's a few different ways you can go about this and you can always just capture your components like one at a time and rebuild them exactly the same way they're laid out in the Quad Cortex software. Or you can just get your entire chain and just try and capture it in its entirety and just be left with one preset. And that's what we'll be doing today. We'll just try and capture the whole monster guitar signal in its entirety. I did a similar capture the other day using the JCM 800. And again, it was of Gary Holt's Tempo of the Damned. I just absolutely love this tone. But in the front, I had the Boss SD-1. I had the Gary Holt boost. In the effects loop, I had actually running the MXR6 band, just boosting a little bit of the bass frequencies and a slight bit of the front at the treble, just so it really gave it that sort of hair on top of the tone. And this is the capture here, and I just wanted to compare it with what we get from the DSL today and just see how the two just differ from each other. <laughs> It's pretty aggressive. It's got all those sort of right ingredients. It's really crunchy on the top. But essentially what I did with this capture was just dial in the whole tone and just capture it all in its entirety. That's the whole sound there. And that's utilizing the IR coming out of the Torpedo Captor X. The other capture I've got down below is exactly the same, but it's just bypassing the Torpedo Captor X IR and you're just getting a raw guitar tone just so you can use it with a real cabinet and everything. In the front of this, we've got the adaptive gate and this is actually a really cool noise gate built into the Quad Cortex. Uh, in the front here, I put the MXR6 band and I've also got the Chief SD1 just in case I just wanna boost things up and make some guitar solos. And then at the back, we've got some reverb going on, some ambience. This is a great sounding reverb and a bit of delay going on. Uh, just for solos and things, if I want to kick that in, I just hit those two. Come on, mate. There you go, you can sit there. Yeah, you gotta be nice, mate. And that's just a really basic preset. It's how I like it. I like to just have things really simple with stomps, but I thought we'd just get a really similar capture to that, but we'll just use the DSL instead. So I've dialed the DSL in a little bit differently than I did with the SC20. Uh, it's got loads more gain on tap, but I just find it's not so sort of abrasive and crunchy on the surface. So for that, I've brought in the Master Effects PMEQ in the effects loop there, and I've just really wound up those low mids and turn up the bass a fair bit. Those low mids just add sort of like more body and more depth to the tone. And it allows you to really sort of like punish the front end of the guitar tone and sort of get the most out of it, but it still stays really thick and really heavy. But you can see all the settings there. I've got it hooked up to the quad cortex, but doing the captures, it's really simple. You're just going to hear um, new neural capture and it's actually really simple to do and it prompts you how to route it all and just brings up the different screens. So here we've got like connect your headphones and your outputs. Uh, the capture out, this is the amp in that comes from the top. Input two, I'm utilizing the XLR output from the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X on this. And we're using the Brit C Vintage Cab. It's got the uh, Vintage 30s inside. I've got a single SM57 pushed up to it in the software. And that's the IR we're using for this, but we'll also do a capture without the IR as well. And this is the main capture screen. And from here we can check if our input levels and our output levels are just right. And with the in types, I've got my guitar connected straight to the quad cortex. So that for the first one that's coming up as instrument, and for the second type two, we're actually coming through the Torpedo Captor X using the XLR output. And that's coming through as a microphone base. If we were doing things like getting a tube screamer or getting different guitar pedals and we just had the pedal connected to it, we'd say that it's the actual instrument input as well and that's how you capture the pedals. That's the only difference. And then on the second window here, you've got the option for different ground lift functions for different microphones or different ways you're routing it. The output on the Captor X actually has a ground lift. It works really well. If we get rid of that and I turn that off, So 
So that's a really cool feature that works well on the torpedo just to get a really clean signal going to this. But uh, what we'll do now, we'll just check that all our levels, everything, the tone is good and we'll capture it. And that sounds really cool going into that. The levels are just starting to clip into that red zone, but we'll just start the capture. It takes about three minutes or four minutes. So the capture's all finished. It gives you the ability now just to go through and reference it against the original and the quad cortex, just going back and forth. But to get the capture, the cortex had to go around the noise gate. So you are gonna get that static noise. We can always just put the noise gate into the capture and the preset after this, but it's just all about the tone, whether or not they're the same. <laughs> I can definitely hear a difference in the capture here. The, the Cortex version just doesn't seem to have the same sort of sort of harsh attack on the surface as the DSL, but whether or not that's because we're not using the noise gate and we're sort of getting the hiss on the Cortex signal, I'm not sure, but it's still pretty close. <laughs> There's a definite difference just in that first bit of attack, just with the tone, but we'll save this preset anyway. D DSL Gary Holt. We'll save it as the default for guitar. So we've gone back to the standard tempo of the damn preset that I made before using the 800. And that was using my preset, the GH800. What we'll do, we'll just bring in beside that one, the other neural capture of my captures, the DSL Gary Holt. Now we've got the two different captures for the same preset. We can actually just cycle those two back and forth. If I click on this one, you can press that button and just assign a foot switch to it. So we'll make it um, that switch. And for the Gary Hold 800, we'll make it that switch. So now they're assigned, I can just turn them on and off just like foot switches or press them both together and have a swap. I guess it's a good way just to compare the two and just see what you like on the day. And on top of that, just see how it goes being like a guitar solo style tone. I think we'll just have to add. And that is just so cool, the way that you can just easily adapt it to just make a kick-ass guitar solo tone. 
I guess there you have it guys. It's a pretty simple way just to capture your favorite rigs. It's extremely close, especially when we had the adaptive gate in the front end of that preset. I think it just, it really brought it to life and made it a lot closer than it was just A and Bing them without the noise gate before. But uh, such a kick-ass tone, especially when you just build upon it, make guitar solos and it's just so easy to compare amps and just test out tones and just see what works. But uh, hope you really enjoyed that video, guys. It's such a cool piece of gear. I'm loving it. But uh, until next time, bye-bye. Thank you.